Hello, and welcome to episode 94 of Bardic Quest. Thoric and Johan press on, delving deeper into the Lost Mine in pursuit of the legendary Forge of Spells. But in the darkened tunnel, something peculiar lurks. An extraordinary challenge they had never anticipated. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Bardic Quest. You make your way towards the northwestern tunnel and pass through. As you uh, make your way through, um, which is probably only about 20 feet or so, you uh, find yourself in an area that seems to consist of numerous intersecting passages. The ceilings of this area are only about six foot high. And you can see, even from where you're stood, with the light that you have, um, that several of the passages um, end with partially excavated rock faces. I have a feeling this place was built by dwarves. How tall is Johan? Six foot two. <laughs> this is how I feel when I go to cottages in the countryside. <laughs> it is a little bit cramped for you. Yeah. Yeah. Love old houses. Just <laughs> like this. Uh, Thoric strides on in front of us. Like, this is perfectly roomy. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to stop uh, and just say to Johan, just keep uh, keep a weather eye, and I'm going to take ten minutes to ritually cast detect magic. Okay. Johan pops a squat. All right. Um, so, would you like my to helmet to sit on? <laughs> <laughs> would you like to uh, describe how you're going to ritual cast uh, detect magic? I would. Um, so, Thoric uh, just sort of focuses his mind and uh, just sort of holds the knuckle duster ring in one hand, but kind of like uh, cradles it in the other hand and then sort of um, whispers a few words and then opens his hands uh, and it kind of almost creates this like silver um almost kind of like a silver window that he then starts to look through. Um, which then, like as he turns around the room, would reveal any magic things within 30 feet of him. Okay. Uh, yes, within 30 feet of him. So, as you're looking around these tunnels for any sign of anything that might light up your vision uh, that might be surrounded by any form of magical aura. The boots that you're wearing certainly do, as do any of the other magical equipment that you would be expecting to, uh, to see. But aside from that, aside from the things on your persons, nothing else seems to be illuminated by any auras of magic at all. Looks to be clear. Which way do we go? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, do you have anything to make a mark on the wall chalk or? Uh, 
I could carve a rune into the wall. Sure. Just so we can find our uh, way. He takes uh, out. Sorry, go. No, no, no. If just if Sergey follows us, if, or if we need to find our way back. He takes out a crowbar and tries to like crudely just carve like something that looks like an arrow into the wall. Okay. And you can uh, I do that? <laughs> it might take you some time. It might make a bit of noise, but you certainly could try. I don't want to uh, blunt my weapons with Thinking this thing, of... so thinking of maybe the noise if it starts to like on the wall um Thorak will just take out uh, he'll just look for any sort of like scrap is there any like scrap of cloth or anything on the floor or any sort of like i don't know rocks or bones or anything there's the occasional bit of loose rock um perhaps from excavations of times gone by but that's about it cool um Thorak will just get a uh, bit of oil and just like splash it on the wall and uh thor would just say light it should make a scorch mark johan likes this idea gets his okay. tinderbox out and lights it and you start to to steadily make some scorch marks as thoric suggested along some of the walls of these these tunnels Thoric holds Johan's torch while he gets out his timber box. <laughs> Johan's like... <laughs> Thoric's like... Ah, oh, never mind. There he is. And uh, we, we continue on, keeping a weather ear and a weather eye for any sources of danger, because there won't be any. We fight. Yeah. Nothing but waves. In fact, this is one of the more pleasant caves we've been in. <laughs> okay. Could I get a uh, perception check from each of you, please? No. No, you may I, not. But if I could, that would be that would be grand. Thirteen. Yeah. Unlucky for some. That's. That's a six. Okay. You continue to make your way through these intersecting tunnels, trying to get a grasp of which direction you're headed in. It's very disorienting for you. Twists and turns, all very like angular turns. Eventually, you go through and around so many corners um, that you lose all sense of direction. And eventually, you make your way out to a room which is quite a large chamber, about 80 foot by 40 foot. And this chamber has a still pool that fills much of it. The water there is dark, revealing a uh, little of what might lie within. The shore of the pool consists of a thin layer of broken shells of strange pale mussels and a fishy odour kind of hangs in the air. There is the passage that leads to the south from this area, at least from whatever orientation you found yourself, which is the, the passage that you've come through. Um, and a set of steps to your right. Uh, climb upwards and you can see that there is a, a sluggish stream that flows out of the cave to the northeast
what would you like to do? Just around the pool, I'd like to cast Detect Magic as a ritual again, um, just sort of get our bearings and also sort of take in where we are, what routes there are that we could take. Okay. Uh, whereabouts in the room are you doing this? In the Where you are or, or deep into the room? Uh, just describe the size of the room again to me, sorry. Uh, so the room is actually it's quite a large room. It's uh, at its widest points about 80 foot by 40 foot with 80 foot being the depth of the room so from where you are to the far wall and then 40 foot across again at its widest points because it's a cave so and where's the pool where's the water? the pool is at the i mean it begins uh kind of uh maybe a quarter of the way into the room so uh, about 20 feet maybe first of all looking out for signs of danger or creatures or anything like that. Okay. Uh, can I get perception checks from both of you then, please? Oh, hello. Yeah, 17. It was a 19 for me. Okay. As you are looking around the room, Something grabs your attention. Nope. You kind of hear. Is it quiet? <laughs> you hear a little bit of, of movement around you, behind you. It's kind of echoing around the room. And you're not entirely sure at first exactly where it's coming from until suddenly something drops from the ceiling on top of Johan right a large it could only be described as what looks like a giant dark yellow amoeba that consists of a thick porous looking golden sludge now moving across the floor of this chamber towards you. I hope you're enjoying this week's episode of Bardic Quest. I just wanted to take a quick moment to highlight our Adventurer's Guild to you. Now, I understand more than you might realise just how difficult it can be to arrange a game of Dungeons & Dragons, particularly if you don't have friends who are into D&D, or indeed if you don't have a friendly local game store that is, well, local. So, I am offering my services as a Dungeon Master to members of the public. To find out more details, head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play, where you can see all of the pay-to-play games that I'm currently running, powered in part by our friends over at startplaying.games, and ran over Discord, so you can enjoy these games of D&D in the comfort of your own home. Again, bardicquest.com forward slash play lists all of the adventures that we're currently going through, including The Lost Minds of Fandelva, which we're currently running through as part of the show. Um, but we're also running a few other games at the moment, including the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. But there'll be other games on there as well, no doubt changing as time goes on through the time travel magic that is the internet. Uh, so head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play to see what games are available, book yourself in, and we'll see you round the table. As Thoric, you are investigating the room, you listen out and keep an eye out for any immediate threats. Johan, you do the same. And as you are assessing the room, you something grabs your attention. And you look around and you're listening because you hear a sound just moving subtly behind you you think it's kind of like a an, an echo around the chamber and then suddenly a large yellow 
amoeba-like creature drops from the ceiling, pretty much right next to you, Johan, uh, consisting of this thick, porous-looking, almost like golden sludge that is now moving along the floor of this chamber towards you. So, let's roll some initiative, please. Uh, 16 for the dwarf. 16 for the dwarf. That's 10 for the rogue. 10 for the rogue. <clears throat> and then we're looking at 12 for the ooze. So we're going to be looking at Thoric, the ooze, then Johan. <laughs> so, Thoric, you are up first at the top of this round. What would you like to do? Great. How far away am I from this thing? So from this thing, you are, because you didn't go too far into the chamber, you're probably about 10 feet away from it. Uh, I am going to uh, just uh, extend my hand towards it and cast Sacred Flame. Oh, nice. Okay. So uh, that's a DC 13 deck save on its part. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, which it fails with a roll of a four. Excellent. Seven points of Radiant Dash. Okay. Uh, would you like to uh, describe your sacred flame, sir? Uh, so literally, kind of just gut reaction. As soon as he hears the splodge, he just turns around, his uh, shield still illuminated, extends his hand, uh, and just um, radiant fire erupts around this thing, uh, scorching it, uh, and hopefully giving uh, Johan an opportunity to either attack or get out of its way. Nice. Okay, and, and that I'm was going, how much damage again, sorry? Uh, seven, and I'm going to move uh, a full 13... I'm going to move uh, 20 feet away from it. So I might be using my 30 feet of movement. I'm going to move uh, further into the room, but okay. make sure that I'm 30 feet away from it. Okay. Um, okay, so you could probably move up... Uh, just to nearby where those steps on the uh, right-hand side of the room were. You can probably stand near the bottom of those steps, I would say. All right. Um, and that's your turn then, presumably. Yeah. I'm just going to shout, watch it, Johan, behind you. Um, all right. Now you look around, Johan, and you can see this creature is now moving towards you. It's very close by at this point. Um, and uh, as it moves towards you, you can hear... It's almost sludging and gurgling across the ground um, as it uh, almost, you watch as it almost uh, rears itself up towards you and almost like strikes you with almost like a fist made entirely of its ooze-like, um, I don't even know what the right word is, body, <laughs> I guess. Um, as it tries to uh, hit you. Uh, so that is going to be um, 12 against your armor class. So probably going to miss, I think. That misses. That misses, okay. Um, and thanks to Thoric's warning, um, you kind of see the strike coming and just definitely step aside um, as you uh, face this rather large horror and it is large by the way it is like 10 foot square in terms of size so it is it's pretty big so that is it's good yeah. johan you're now facing this creature you're now engaged with it too what would you like to do uh although i kind of sense how this is gonna go uh mm -hmm. Um, Johan just does what he does and will attack it with his dagger, uh, which is not a comment on Gladys, I'd like to point out. Uh, this is an attempt to get as much... Is, is, is Thoric within five feet of me? No, Thoric's now moved deeper into the room. You're still near the entrance tunnel to the room. Thoric has now moved further away from this creature. He's further into the room near the steps on the right-hand side of the chamber. 
So he's now going to be, um, given the size of the ooze, he's going to be, he wanted to keep 30 feet away from it, so he's going to be about 45 feet away from where you currently are. Okay. Uh, then I will simply try and stab it okay. with my dagger. Go for it. Roll to hit for us. Oh, God. Oh, that is a 24. Oh, which will certainly hit. Okay. Uh, that's a 1d4 plus 3. Uh, that's a 4 plus 3. That's 7. 7 points of damage. Lovely. Okay. Does it take the damage. It does, as you... It's piercing damage, right, from a dagger? Indeed. All right. Yeah, so you, you stab at this creature with your dagger. Um, and uh, just as you stab it, you just kind of go in ever so slightly too far with the blade. And you do feel a, a slight burn on your on your finger um, just as you pull the blade out. It's, it's only subtle, not enough to actually do any physical damage to you, but enough for you to be... It take you by surprise, perhaps. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh oh. Ollie's frozen in the most magnificent face. He has. Okay. Oh. Uh, Go back with us. Anything else from the room? Since I've done that. Oh, I think we're having connection issues with you, Ollie. Oh. 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 Ollie. Sorry. Sorry. That's, That's right. my internet. That's all right. Um, heavy editing. <laughs> Indeed. Do you, want to, do you want to ask me again? Uh, yeah, it was simply, um, was there anything else you wanted to do in response yes, to... Yes, please. I'd like to take use my cunning action to disengage. Oh, nice move. Yes. And then presumably you're going to move then in that case. Where are you planning on moving to? Close to Thoric, please. Uh, <laughs> and right. maybe a little bit behind him. Well, you're not going to be able to get behind him because you'd have to go around this, uh, this ooze creature. But you could certainly get within... 10 or 15 feet of him, certainly. 10 is better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. No problem then. All right. Uh, so you watch then Thoric as uh, Johan uh, trying to navigate around this large ooze-like creature, um, circles it, and then kind of breaks off and moves as close to you as he can get at that this particular point. What would you like to do? Okay. Thoric. Um... Does this thing move quickly? It doesn't look particularly fast, no. Um, I say to Johan, we'll probably outrun it, but it depends whether that serves us particularly well. <laughs> I prefer to kill this creature. It is repulsive. Fair play. Um, and I will punch my hand towards it and cast Guiding Bolt at first level upon it. Ooh, nice. Okay. Uh, so that's a roll to hit, I believe, on Guiding Bolt. It is indeed. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see how you get on. Plus five. We have a 15. Okay. That's going to hit. So do you want to roll damage for us? Would. I was wondering what you were going to say. <laughs> Guys in the hole. 46. Woo! Nice. And, uh, another d6 for me, please. Another. Another d6 for the dwarf. Oh, hello. Two fives in there. Ooh, nice. 17 points of radiant damage. Ooh, 17 whole points. Okay. Uh, the creature is now looking what you might consider to be bloodied. 
um, in that it is now really starting to uh, feel the effects now of these uh, attacks as this flash of light streaks from out of your uh, rings towards this uh, ooze-like creature, um, surrounding it now with this uh, mystical-looking dim light, uh, which is going to, I believe, grant advantage uh, on the next attack roll made against the creature. It does indeed. Uh, question. Helpful. Yes. Would you allow me to light a torch off of Johan's torch and just throw it in front of me? Uh, or would that need too much of my actionings, bonus actions, or anything like that? Well, what's the what's the what's the intent? I'm not trying to attack it. What I'm trying to do is chuck it closest to it to yep. see if it avoids it or whether it just doesn't care. And like, if fire deters it in any way, shape, or form, um, okay. Whether it tries to go around it or not go near it, or whether it doesn't care and just rolls over it like all the custard in the world. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll be generous. Yeah, you can have That's... that. I'll take a torch, light it off of uh, Johan's torch, and just <clears throat> throw Hurl it. it um, yeah, probably about so it's about ten feet away from this thing, roughly. Okay. Just to see what it does. Sure. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so now it, it is the creature's turn, um, which uh, moves steadily and slowly uh, towards you all. Um, and it just kind of almost flat, not quite flattens, but dampens the, the flame on the torch. Just kind of, yeah, there's just a, a kind of quiet hiss as the torch goes out and you can still kind of just about see it underneath the globulous form of this creature. Um, so it doesn't seem to have been deterred at all by the torch. Um, it is now, uh, because you had to go round the ooze-like creature, uh, Johan, it is probably going to be able to dash towards you uh, to get engaged with you because you have to go around it to get to Thoric. Um, so it is now engaged with you, but it's had to dash to do so because this thing moves pretty slow. Um, so it can't attack you this turn at least. But it's up in your grill. Woo! So what would you like to do? I don't think I can quite convey how disgusted that Johan is with this thing. Um, <laughs> he's met m many of beats, but this thing is just... Ugh. <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, I'm going to use a bow. I'm going to use my cunning action to disengage. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to throw Gladys because sneak attack applies to ranged weapons as well. And nice. because if I have uh, an advantage, uh, Thoric doesn't need to be close to me because mm -hmm. I because thankfully Thoric put guiding bolts, so now I qualify for sneak attack. All I need to do is hit the bloody thing. Okay, that was a lovely combination of words. I fucking loved it. <laughs> sneak <laughs> attack. <laughs> All right. right, roll to hit for us then. Come on, baby. That is a nat 20, my bros. Oh, nice. OK, okay so roll he for damage for us, then. Takes out Gladys and, like, gives it an almighty. <laughs> OK, so that's, so I get 1d6 plus 1 for Gladys, so that's 2d6 plus 1, plus another 2d6 for sneaky damage. Okay, so I'm rolling with two to sixes. Ugh. Okay, so that's eight plus one. Uh, that's nine. And then two d6 for sneaking damage is another well, plus seven, which is 16. So that's 16 points of damage, please, Mr. Okay. DM. Okay. You hurl Gladys across the room towards this creature. Um, the blade of Gladys slashes through this ooze creature. Um, but the creature doesn't seem to be necessarily hurt by it. 
rather than simply splitting into now two separate creatures. Just kind of look at Thorit like... <sighs> it's not you. He just sort of like taps him on the shoulder. <laughs> that was a true throw a dwarf could never have made. That was <laughs> wonderful. And I hate this thing and that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you'd like to do, uh, Johan? No, I just make a heavy sigh and um, get my dagger out again. <laughs> and I believe, again. I believe if I'm right, you are now stood directly next to Thoric, yes? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Um, so these creatures are now, uh, again, things are still a bit close. Uh, these things are, well, the, the one of them is now 10 feet away from you. The other one is 15 feet away from you. If you wanted to move behind Thoric, you're welcome to do so. I take a few steps so that I'm just behind Thoric. So you still want to stay, like, <laughs> next to him? So within arm's reach? Yeah. But you're going to use get behind Thoric and his shield? Yes. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it's basically just going to be like Homer Simpson throwing everything he's got in his pockets at those robots that itch in scratchy land. Just like, <laughs> 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 coins, <laughs> rope. <laughs> Doesn't he take off his trousers and throw those at them? Yeah. His belt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, Thoric, you've just watched as the, this ooze has now been split into two smaller oozes. Mm. Um, and uh, Johan has quickly uh, stepped behind you at this point, as as because they seem to have very little interest in slowing down uh, to get to you. So, what would you like to do? The nearest one is about fifteen feet away from where you currently are. Um, fifteen foot, you say? Just checking something. Yeah. Uh, rules. I'm not going to lie. I felt really bad when you rolled that crit. Yeah. You should. You should. <laughs> Why can't we just... We can't even kill things anymore. <laughs> I think I'm going to wait. Next. Okay. To, I'm going to intercede myself. So then I'm thinking that... Johan will be able to exploit uh, them if, with sneak, essentially with sneak attack. He'll be able to sneak attack by me staying still. I'm going to hold my action to hit whatever comes in range first with my hammer. Okay. Um, he saw Johan stab it and that worked. Slashing it doesn't seem to work. So he's going to see if hitting it with a big hammer is going to hopefully spread it enough that it can't constitute itself anymore. Uh, so he's just with the light up sort of swinging it around, ready to go. Uh, <laughs> but apart from that, he's uh, he's done. Alright. Uh, so, the first ooze, uh, they are far enough away now that in order to get to you, they're going to have to dash. So both of them actually are going to dash towards you. Uh, to kind of surround you, Thoric, because Johan's kind of behind you. Um, and they're not fast enough to be able to engage with Johan as well. They're just going to try and surround you, Thoric. Um, which will be their turn. Uh, now, obviously, if you wanted to utilise your action, which you've held, you are welcome to do so. I'd love to. Lovely. Whichever one came close to me first. Okay. Uh, that's a 18 on the die. Oh, that will certainly hit. Uh, and so a d8 plus uh, things, d8 plus three. Uh, so that is going to be five points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, so you bring uh, you bring your hammer down um, upon uh, one of the oozes and you splatter a fair bit of it into the ground, almost flattening it like a pancake. Uh, this creature 
just the way it's wriggling, wriggling and rippling and wiggling, you can tell that the creature was not, did not like that, uh, certainly. Um, but it's not enough to uh, splat it to oblivion, at least. I uh, I wipe the like spray of sort of acidic flesh off my face and just go, go away. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Johan. Then you're up. These cre- you're behind Thoric still, so you're not engaged with either of these creatures, but they are pretty close to where you are. Okay, um, I stay within five feet of Thoric, and I throw. I throw one of my daggers, uh, okay. and see how that goes uh, to the one, the other one. Sure. Not the one that Thoric splatted, but the other one. Okay, go for it. Roll to hit for us. That is a 12. A 12 uh, is going to hit. Oof. Oh, okay. So that's 1d4 plus 3. That's 3 plus 3, which is 6. Plus, my trusty Thoric is by my side, so that'll qualify for a sneaky, sneaky, stabby, stabby. Uh, I think that's a six and a four, which is ten, so that's sixteen. How are you finishing it? Oh! So, he kind of takes a step back, and he, sh- he kind of shouts in his head, Be gone! And just kind of throws it like a skimming stone, so it kind of goes, nice. and then it just kind of impacts, and then just kind of goes. And the whole thing, yeah, the whole thing kind of just starts to lose its shape, and it just almost just turns into a, pu- a puddle of goo. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay, that's one half of the ooze down. Um, so. Ugh. Anything else you'd like to do, Johan, at this point? I draw my other dagger yeah. and kind of get behind the other ooze. Okay. Nice. Okay, fine. And then presumably <laughs> that's your turn, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Thoric, you're up. I, ch- I charge in. Are we in any way, shape or form flanking the ooze now? <laughs> You are indeed. So you oh, may cool. have had. Well, in fact, actually, I don't think we got the we rolled with the advantage on the guiding bolt, did we? Actually, we did. Oh, we did. Okay, yeah. good. It's yeah. just I got an at twenty. Oh, that's right. Um, so yes, there was no need to. There was no need. Uh, <laughs> but yes, you have advantage now. So Thoric, uh, you may roll with advantage on Thank your you. attack. Aren't you kind? Uh, that's a total of eighteen. Ooh, hit. certainly hit. And just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's another five points of bludgeoning damage. How, sir, are you finishing this one? Ah, uh, just, um, he just basically is rushing it and just puts as much weight behind it as he can. He kind of uses the shield to swing some momentum uh, around and just takes the thing out. Um, and if the other indication of when the other one <laughs> expired is any, uh, is any thought, uh, as he hits it, it just bursts like a balloon and just sprays across the oh. wall. Grim. Um, all right. The room falls silent once again as these puddles of yellow goo are on the floor, the walls, painted yellow, shall we say. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying today's episode of Bardic Quest. Uh, Before we get back to the adventure, I just want to take a moment to ask for your support. We work hard to bring you the best episodes every week, and we're always looking for ways to improve and make the show even better. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us reach more people and keep the show going. And if you want to be even more involved, why not leave a comment or hit the like button on the latest episode? Your feedback is always, always appreciated. We have so many great episodes for you to check out, so don't miss out. Subscribe to Bardic Quest on YouTube now and never miss an episode. And with that, let's get back to the adventure. 
What would you like to do? I well, kind of use my dagger to kind of pick all the booze off my weapons, you know, cause, and then pick it up and kind of like, I don't know. I, I'm tempted it, to like just get my water it, skin on it. Just It kind of, you can, as you're holding it up, you kind of feel it burning your fingers a little. Yeah. It looks towards the water mm. and is tempted to clean his weapons in it, but he's not sure what it is. So it just kind of peers into this. Is it like a little basin of water? It's like quite a large pool, actually. A very large pool. It's a large pool. So we can yeah. guess this is where the creature lived until it attacked us. That would be your call to make, if that is the assumption that you. Uh, I. I. Look at the pool of water. Mm -hmm. I look to Thoric and go because did Thoric already? Did did you already cast detect magic? I don't think I got that far. No, you didn't Um, get that far. No. I will do now though. I've got the time to yes, see. Please. I'll pick Gladys up and uh, sort of use a scrap of cloth to clean her off and hand her back to Johan and say, that was a fine throw, my friend. And a fine throw for us. Uh, what is this creature? I've never seen it before. I don't know. It's like angry custard. Your hand recoils at the thought of food coming to life and attacking. <laughs> it's pretty horrifying, actually. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> shakes off that thought. And now, now Thoric has wiped off very kindly the the angry yellow stuff. Can I hold it without it burning now? It with the uh, dagger. Mm. Yeah, certainly. Okay, cool. That's all right. That'll do then. He just kind of wipes it on bit of, when he bits of spare cloth he's got. Just kind of wipes it off and then puts his weapons away and then peers into the pool of water. As you're looking into the pool, actually, Johan, because thorik has got his shield that's lighting up the room too, um, you think you can actually make out there's a form of something in the bottom of that water. It seems to be quite still. About ten feet from the shore. What does it look like? Uh, kind of like uh It's hard to make out because the there's the, the ripples of, of the water and this 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 water is flowing. There's a, even if it is sluggish, there is a, a stream that flows out the cave in the northeast of the chamber. So there's waves and things which is distorting yeah. things, particularly with the light as well from Thoric's shield. But you're making out maybe like a, a off-white colour, maybe? Maybe like a, a oh. beigey, br- like light brown colour? Thoric? Hi. Look at this. Uh, I look over and um, has my detect magic kicked in. It takes about ten minutes to cast. Okay. Um, so you cast your detect magic. And you have a look into the pool of water, and uh, something is lighting up your detect magic from within the pool. You're making out an aura around a quite a thin, uh, long object, probably about 30 centimeters long, perhaps a little bit longer. Um, and you are picking up a aura of, uh, do you learn the school with detect magic? You do. I think so. Um, yeah. Evocation. Ooh. 
there is something down there. Hmm. Something, something magical. Uh, a tool, perhaps, of some kind. How you say it was ten feet deep? It was ten feet from the shore. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how deep the water is, uh, but you, your estimate would probably be maybe about ten feet deep, but it could be deeper because of you know light and refraction and all that sort of scientific stuff. Could be a trap. Trap. I think more likely it might be something lost or discarded or Thoracers are trying to make out what the shape is underneath there. Mm -hmm. Can Thoric put his shield to the water's surface in order to shine on it? Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. Um, there's definitely um, some things about this form, whatever it is, um, that is glistening. Um, you think, actually, you can just make out um, almost like a humanoid shape in the water. Fast soul. But it's 30 centimetres long. No, no. The, uh, the thing that was lighting up the detect magic was 30 centimeters long which was around this this shape sorry i maybe was not clear on that so there's oh. this this <clears throat> off-white shape which now you think is like a humanoid shape um which if that is indeed a humanoid in its possession is something about 30 centimeters long which was giving off the evocation aura is that a, a corpse could be if you need a uh, a little more um, reassurance, I could probably provide some. Okay. Or can I? <laughs> Did I? Will you? No, I can't. Ignore me. Uh, I'm happy to go down there. Can you go down in heavy armor? Oh, I'll probably take it off. Oh, right. Okay, I'll um, draw me to put a rope around you, and if you come into trouble, I'll pull you up. Sure. Um, I proceed to uh, take off my armor and many layers. Uh, are you in heavy armor, is it? I am, yes. Okay, so this is going to take you about five minutes here, unstrapping and un unhooking all of the bits, taking off the, the bits of armour um, as you prepare for your little paddle uh, in this body of water. I keep my short clothes on, uh, just in case. I've got some spares so I can always uh, okay. change. <laughs> don't want to get my, my, I don't want to get my other clothes dr wet so I then end up... Indeed. And you certainly don't want to pull yeah. a Sergei either. Um, and no. showing everyone Your hand is somewhat you. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then you you step into the pool, um, ready to uh, to get under water. And as you're as you're kind of moving deeper into the pool, it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper, coming up to like your neck. And eventually, you're struggling to feel the bottom of the pool. Um, so you are going to have to to dive in. Um, to reach the bottom and whatever might be down there. I take, uh, I surface up and I say to um, Johansi, would I be able to, uh, actually, pass me Gladys a sec. He uh, takes it out of his belt and uh, throws it towards him with the handle first. <clears throat> so I catch him. Not in water, not in flowing water. Um, <laughs> Uh, I cast light on Gladys um, and go dive underneath. Okay. Um, Gladys lights up, illuminating uh, the water around you, and you dive into the water. And much as you suspected, you can see now clearly um, that this is indeed a skeleton. 
um, underneath the the water. Um, it looks to be well. The source of the glistening becomes quite clear um, because it seems to actually have uh, two uh, rings that look like they might be made of platinum on uh, some of its fingers. Um, it's also clutching uh, what looks like uh, a wand of some kind. Um, it is um, designed where it's almost got a spiral around the handle um, and then has got like this blue, very jagged looking crystal uh, on the wand's head. Um, but also the other thing that you notice about this uh, skeleton is that there are um, arrows protruding from its rib cage. Could I get a history check from you, please? Of course. So I assume this isn't to do with stone work. No. But instead with arrow work. <laughs> uh, that's a 12. A 12. Okay. Um, yeah, you suspect uh, that these, uh, by the design of these arrows, or what you can make of what remains of the design, certainly, is they look as though they might be orc arrows. Uh, and looks particularly decomposed and ancient. Yes. Boom. I will uh, go down. Uh, Thoric isn't bothered by bodies in any way, shape, or form. He's seen bodies in all shapes and sizes and differing senses of uh, decomposition. And uh, he's he does not owe to the idea of... Um, one of Thoric's philosophies is that you can't dishonor the dead. The dead are dead. Um, and uh, they're beyond they're beyond uh, you know the tr the tribulations of mortal folk so uh, seeing as this uh, kind soul has no further use of uh, of these items he will take the wand and the uh, the two rings okay and then presumably take them up to the surface oh yeah preferably yes mm. I'd like to um Okay, so Johan, you see as Thoric emerges now with uh, a few things in his hands, um, nothing um, too uh, large in size, um, just a few trinkets, really. You see him emerge with uh, what looked to be two rings in his hands and like this, uh, something which you would certainly recognize from your own studies um, and perhaps does not fill you with the greatest... Uh, enthusiasm to see uh, what looks to be certainly some kind of wand of some kind. Mm. I know what that is. It must be very old. Hi. What of the rings? Are they of any value? Beyond They're material me. value. <clears throat> they're made of, uh, they're not magical, not as far as I can tell, but they, uh, they appear to be made of platinum, which, uh, is certainly, certainly valuable. Well, at least we're not entirely empty handed. Hi. Um, would you like the rings? I suppose I could hold on to them for now. He right. puts them in a little pocket, a little satchel, little. Just, they go to the bottom of his bag. There's no like care and attention. Just kind of tucks them, and they're just rattling around at the bottom of his bag. <laughs> Does it um, sit all right with you? I mean, I, I know not a lot of people share my sentiment that uh, you know things should be used, and uh, the dead are dead. I don't think they'll serve much use at the bottom of that pool. Well, he's not using it, as you say. Aye. Might as well be you. Indeed. Um, Thoric's not really used to using wands. He understands them, but kind of turns it in his hands and... Kind of... Can you get any sense of what it does, or any way to... You would need to take an hour, unless you have the identify spell, you're going to need to take an hour to study it to really understand exactly what it does. 
Perhaps not then. Well, give it a wave. (laughs) (laughs) No, Um, no, definitely not. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I will very carefully uh, put it away somewhere safe. Um, And then hand Gladys back to Johan. And then put my clothes back on. (laughs) <laughs> Thoric is for passing note like Thoric is uh, has as much black and silver hair on his chest and body as he does on his head <laughs> just carpeted um, you can see also that like the theme of having piercings and stuff he has some kind of like dermal uh, subdermal kind of piercings kind of rings and um, kind of uh, Yes, I know what Ollie's thinking. <laughs> yes, both of them are. Um, <laughs> oh. um, and uh, he's got like, uh, it's not normal sort of tattoo ink. It looks kind of uh, sort of not luminescent, but kind of like it has a this kind of sheen, almost this kind of like white silver tattoo ink that he has several kind of like interlacing ring designs kind of almost sort of Celtic knot work sort of geometric pattern Mm -hmm. um, across his back and across some of his forearms and his his shoulders and stuff. Okay. So that's going to take you about 10 minutes to get back into your heavy armor. Yep. Um, As you again strap it back on put all the hooks and things in the right places, whatever it is that you need to do. Oh time I got this adjusted. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Is there anything that you you would like to do, Johan, whilst he's donning his armor? Uh, I suppose maybe kind of go back to where, sort of look to where we came from and -hmm. just look into the dark and just wonder what more surprises lie in store. Okay. The adventures of Thoric and Johan. (laughs) Well, you have two exits from this room. Well, there's another uh, fine mess you've got me into. <laughs> there is the way that you came from, um, and then there are those steps on the right-hand side um, that climb up uh, on the right-hand side of the room. And, of course, uh, in addition, if you were so daring um, and not claustrophobic at, at all, uh, there's also the direction that the stream flows out of the cave to the northeast as well. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, which yeah. direction would you like to head in? The other one. Up, up the steps? Yes. On the right hand side? Okay. Stairs feel good. Stairs are familiar, they lead places. Mm. They're always up to something. Hey. <laughs> so you ascend these uh, steps on the right-hand side of the room, past the puddles of goo on the ground, um, and you head up into a uh, another corridor within this underground mine complex that you are exploring, and you continue forth into the darkness below um, to see what other secrets this lost mine of Fandelva is hiding. So that's it for another exciting episode of Bardic Quest. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Before we go, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to a couple of folks. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to James Webster for providing us with and allowing us to use this beautiful animated artwork that features throughout the show. If you are a fan of his work and want to show your support to him, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash James RPG art where you can become a patron of his. But also I'd like to say a big thank you to our friends over at Sirenscape for allowing us to use their wonderful ambience, music and sound effects. So if you'd like to introduce those sounds to your table, head on over to sirenscape.com to check out their amazing work. So that's it from us this week and we will catch you next time.